Show. So thank you so much for coming out. We're really thrilled to have everyone here. Uh, uh, we're big fans of this space, excited to have this in Hyde Park. Uh, and nights like this will make sure this continues. So um, I'm Randy Kicker. Uh, I'm a professor at the University of Chicago Law School. from the university. Um, so, uh, I, I sort of came here for college and I've really never figured out how you get out of Hyde Park. Uh, so, yeah. They say there's a train. Uh, uh, so let me tell you a little bit about what we're going to do here tonight. So um, I brought some books with me. We're at the University of Chicago and we believe in books. So I brought some books with me. So, um, as you may have seen, we call ourselves, we, what we, well, you'll see the we in just a second. Uh, we call ourselves the Hutchins Plan. Uh, that's actually a historical name with some meaning. So, John Boyer, a dean of the college, has a recent book on the history of the University of Chicago. I have an autograph copy. I'm special. Yes, <laughs> I bought mine at the store, too. Uh, so, um, uh, and the Hutchins Plan was... Uh, Robert Maynard Hutchins uh, became president of the university at the age of 30. 30. 30. Right? I, I just, you know, you, I don't even know what that means. Uh, I mean, I understand the words together. So incredibly young, and he came in with a vision for changing the university. Uh, and I think he's credited with, in some sense, moving the university into what it would eventually become, which we know is the best university in the world. We believe that. Uh, uh, so the Hutchins plan, that's who we are. Uh, second bit of history, book two. So this spot is an incredibly important historical spot in improvisational comedy. Uh, that's sort of remarkable. Uh, but the original improv shows uh, that led to Second City started right here in 1955. Um, so people at the university, uh, Mike Nichols was an undergraduate at the university. Um, uh, Elaine May was seemingly taking classes but not paying for them. That's not a good idea, <laughs> uh, at least not on our side. Um, and they started with others um, a theater here, the Compass Theater. So this is the second book. This is a University of Chicago Press book called The Compass. It's a really great, great read. Um, and improvisational comedy starts here in the 1950s. Um, and um, a number of people affiliated with the university, including Bernie Salins, whose brother Marshall Salins is a professor in the anthropology department here, left to start Second City. And improv comedy as we know it, that leads to, to SNL and all of that, started right here. Uh, so the name, the revival, is the idea that John Stoops has brought this back to Hyde Park. So we feel very lucky to be here to have a chance to do improv with you tonight. Okay, that's two. Book three. Then we're out of books. Uh, book three is, is the improvisational form we're going to do tonight. So improv, as you get, is all made up on the spot. So, so there's no, we don't have a script somewhere. There are no secret signals. There's nothing. Uh, but we do have a structure. Uh, so what does that mean? Uh, so there's short form improv and long form, uh, whose line is it anyway, sort of short games. Long form is the idea that what we're going to try to do is to build a story, uh, build patterns, build characters that will last for 55 minutes or so, um, an hour roughly. Uh, that's long form improv. And the particular form we're going to do here, um, uh, there's a place on the north side called I.O., used to be called Improv Olympic. Uh, Stephen Colbert's brother, who is a lawyer, represents, it turns out, the Olympic Committee. Um, and the Olympic Committee is very protective of that name. So what once was known as I.O. is now, as Improv Olympic is now known as I.O. Um, uh, and uh, they have a show there, the longest running improv show in Chicago, called Armando. And the heart of Armando is, is monologue. So we're going to have a monologist come out. Uh, we'll take some suggestions from the audience. The monologist will tell a story based upon that. And then the Hutchins plan uh, will improvise based upon that. 
that's the structure of what we're going to do here tonight. We don't need the books. What we do need, though, are our improvisers. So if we can get some improvisers out, my fellow improvisers from the Hutchins plan, please, please. <laughs> graduating in June, uh, graduate students, former graduate students, former law students, college graduates, but all associated with the University of Chicago. Um, uh, that's the design here. All right, the other thing we need then is, is a monologist somewhere, is he out there? <laughs> in the university that I know of um, uh, is a picture uh, from the back uh, of Milton Friedman walking with George Stigler. Uh, uh, Milton Friedman, as you know, was very short. George Stigler was very tall. Think of us as sort of a low-grade version of that. <laughs> Let me tell you a little bit about Todd. We'll take a few questions from the group about Todd to see if anyone else is. You should know something about Todd before we get going here. Uh, uh, yes. So uh, Todd is one of my good friends at the law school. Um, I, I can say, I think I can say this, I hired Todd. I think that's what Woo! That means I chaired the faculty uh, hiring committee when we hired Todd. So, uh, and I, I have the great joy of having done that multiple times and I can look around the law school and say this is the person I hired, including our current dean. Um, so, uh, I try to not let those people forget that. Uh, so, uh, I'm not here tonight. Exactly. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Todd is uh, a graduate of law school as well, uh, a graduate of Princeton, studied civil engineering there. Yes, right. exactly. He builds stuff. Uh, uh, like the beaver, he can build dams. Uh, uh, he is um, uh, 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 a conservative. He says that <laughs> if, if only we had one of those running for president. Okay. <laughs> researcher at the university. Uh, Todd's better half by quite a bit. <laughs> uh, and Todd and Tara have three great kids. Uh, and, and Todd and Tara are very actively involved in their lives. A lot of hockey, uh, some soccer, and a variety of other things. Uh, I'm sorry? Improv. Here. Improv, right here, exactly. Good, thank you, Tara. Um, <laughs> And uh, Todd is um, from Pittsburgh, uh, so loves all things Pittsburgh, and is super tight with his family, uh, a very large extended family. Do we have questions for Professor Henderson? Please, please, please. Uh, where did you purchase your pants? <laughs> uh, these were a gift from my wife. <laughs> or, maybe, or maybe my mother-in-law, I don't remember it exactly. But uh, not surprisingly, I think they come from Nantucket Island. Please, <laughs> <laughs> please, just go. Um, okay. So, do you feel like your three children gravitate more towards like humanities and like um, like logical law stuff, or more towards the sciences? Is there like competition there between you and your wife? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, my uh, my my eleven year old is a big Hillary Clinton supporter, so I'm pushing her heavily into the sciences. <laughs> Uh, and then the others are too, a little too young. I don't. I think Maeve, the five-year-old, will be the first female member of SEAL Team Six. Our <laughs> son dreams of playing in the NHL, but that's unrealistic. <laughs> so I just hope he stays out of jail. <laughs> Robert is going to stay out of jail. <laughs> What does uh, Chicago have to do to improve its sports programs? <laughs> well, since I've been a member of the faculty uh, of 10 plus years, I've encouraged us to go back into the Big Ten, which I'm told we have the right to do that. It's great publicity, just 
Michigan beat those eggheads from the University of Chicago a thousand to nothing in the fall. I think it would be great. <laughs> and it also means we might actually improve Northwestern has a decent sport, so I think we should rejoin the big 12 or 14 or whatever it is. <laughs> How's okay. the weather up there? It's so cold to lose your hair. Any quick questions from the audience for Professor Henderson just before we get going? Anything we need to know? Yes, yes, yes. Is okay. your wife a conservative? Um, no. <laughs> No comments. <laughs> Not even close. Okay. okay, then I think we're ready to get going here. Um, so, um, what we're going to do here, let me explain exactly how this is going to do this. We're going to do this Todd Henderson in three acts. Um, so we're going to take a suggestion, Todd's going to do a monologue based upon that. Todd's job is not to be funny. If he's funny, that's great. He does not have to be funny. Do not judge him on that. Judge us on that. <laughs> After Todd does a monologue, um, uh, this group, we will improvise for a while. Uh, and after we've exhausted that monologue, um, we're going to take another suggestion, act two. Uh, uh, we'll do another monologue, uh, more improv improvisation. Uh, act three will be exactly the same thing, and then we will be done. Okay? So what I'd like to get now is, is a, uh, a suggestion from you. Uh, let's say a topic of a poem that you think it would be interesting for Todd Henderson to write. Moonshine. Moonshine. Oh, 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 oh. Moonshine. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, uh, I didn't drink when I was a kid. Uh, my, my dad went to West Point, and uh, no one ever drank any alcoholic beverages in my house. So I was, uh, did not have my first sip of alcohol until I was 21. However, uh, my relatives are from West Virginia, despite the Ooh. Nantucket pants. And uh, yes, I am just one step from uh, Ronnie Joe and Bubby. Uh, <laughs> and uh, my Ronnie Joe set of relatives, uh, God bless them, were inveterate moonshiners. Uh, I spent many a summer back at the farm in southeast Ohio in coal country. And uh, with my relatives who have no teeth, uh, they live on government cheese. Uh, I remember driving, and they, and they always had mason jars full of what looked like piss. Uh, and, and I'm told that now, I mean, I didn't know, I was six years old. I mean, you have no idea what they're drinking. Uh, I think it was Mountain Dew, but it was a particular kind of Mountain Dew. I remember, uh, riding with my uh, Uncle Delwyn, who uh, we called Tiny. And as you can imagine, uh, and this is my dad's brother, uh, he was about 5'3", and about 400 pounds. <laughs> and um, he was a kind of welder, uh, I guess. Uh, <laughs> my dad is like 6'5", like 280, uh, with a PhD in nuclear engineering, so something went a little bit strange in the family tree. I remember riding with Dellen one time in his car, and it was about 100 degrees. We were driving through the cornfields, and I, uh, the windows were all up, and I said, you know, Uncle Dellen, could you turn on the air conditioning? And he says, yeah, yeah, we got this new kind of air conditioning. It's the 460 air conditioning. And I said, oh, that sounds great. What's a 460 air conditioning? He said, you roll down all four windows and drive 60 miles an hour. <laughs> so this is the other branch of the Henderson family. Now, we are similar in a lot of ways because when Tiny found out that the neighbor across the street was on disability, he allegedly hurt his back in the coal mine. And then Tiny observed him out one day moving giant big rocks in his front yard. So, being a Henderson, Tiny ob obtained a video camera, probably <laughs> illegally, <laughs> stole some blank video tapes, <laughs> and then proceeded to document for hours the neighbor moving large rocks, which he then sent anonymously <laughs> to the government. <laughs> to the government. <laughs> What's uh, 
What, what for? Okay, so uh, I've noticed this over the past couple of weeks, but uh, you know our neighbor huh? Gary. Uh, Gary! Gary, he hurt his back in a coal mine. You don't say! He claimed, he claimed he was swinging his pickaxe and he hurt himself, uh -huh. claiming disability now. Really? Yeah. Huh. What is uh, Gary doing in his front yard right now? Lifting some heavy rocks. That doesn't look like a man with disability, does he, Karen? That sure does not. Sure does not. So, Karen, here's what I'm going to do. All right. I'm ready for a plan. We're I like gonna, plans. We're going to make it big in the world, finally, Karen. We're going to strike it rich. I'm going to send this to the government, and the government will be so thankful they're going to give us a million dollars. Wait. What? Why are we stopping at a million? Why aren't we thinking big? Oh, what, no. This what, is, if, what if they tax our million? Oh, they're definitely going to tax our million. That's how they're going to tax our million. So then we're down to, like, what, 700,000? That, that's not how you make it big. No. can't even buy a house for that. Karen, you're not understanding the plan. I am not dictating the terms of a million dollars. This is just a million dollars that the government generally gives when you turn in people that are claiming disability but are faking it. Do you, do you have examples of this? No, but I heard it on the radio once. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, that, that How was your legit. day? <laughs> How were the kids at school? Thanks for asking. Oh, First day with second grade. Oh, huh? God. They're little shits, just like what you would think. <laughs> Better than first graders, though? Marginally. Marginally better. Listen. Not, not by a lot. Once we make $700,000, you're going to be teaching a law school students. It's going to be great. <laughs> I hear they're much better behaved. Okay. How old are you, Tim? Yeah, you're okay to drink. <laughs> yeah. My daddy drinks something just like this. He watches the football on the TV and then he drinks this and sometimes he tells me that I can drink it too, but it makes me wet myself, but I like it. <laughs> Father's a good man. He's training you right. That's the only way to make a man in America is to give him alcohol. <laughs> My daddy has a big old axe in the backyard and he swings it and he chops down trees and then he puts the trees back in the pile. I don't understand it because the tree was in the pile standing up, right? <laughs> but I would not have given to have a dad like yours. <laughs> My daddy has a leather couch and he sits on it and sometimes the couch sticks to his back. So he tells me to come over and I come over and he says, get me some canola oil. And I said, oh, I think mom already cooked. And then he tells me, bring the canola oil, boy. Don't make me whoop you. So I bring him a bottle of canola oil. And then he comes back and tells me to leave. And then you know what he does with the canola oil. Spell it out for me. <laughs> Sometimes I don't like my daddy so much. <laughs> that you lie with your father. The point is that your father, via withdrawal of his affection, makes you a man. <laughs> I think this stuff making me real nice. You look pretty. <laughs> <laughs> You know, she's from the East Coast. I actually know if she'll, she'll get it. Well, they do coal on the East Coast, too, don't they? Um, well, her dad's an accountant. So, no. <laughs> well, I've been accounting coal down here <laughs> since I was about seven years old. And I had done nothing to me no. at all. <laughs> 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 So what does she do? Um, well, she's at a boarding school right now. I don't, I forget the name of it. I was out there, I was chopping down trees uh, for mom. Uh, trees, coal of the ground. <laughs> I was out there looking for ground coal and uh, I, I, just, I just, I saw this girl and she had a red beret and I just remember thinking that she was like, a like diamond. A diamond! <laughs> She was like a diamond. Like, you know we've been to find diamonds our whole lives out here, and I... No. Never have. <laughs> Except for me, because I found the human incarnation of a, of a diamond. Um, and I'm really excited for her to meet, to meet everybody, but I'm just a little nervous, because her hands don't have calluses, and she... I, I don't know, she wears chapstick? Like, I just don't know if she's going to get it. <laughs> Hold on. 
just because she's all fancy like it. Where's chaps sticks? I don't know if it's a plural. I don't know anything. You kind of just agreed with hearing the word. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, like, is there something comes off in my mouth and it tastes weird? Oh, gold dust? <laughs> <laughs> so we got this video in the mail. Uh, it said anonymous on it, but then your address was on it. So. <laughs> Check out to uh, Mr. Gregory. <laughs> Sir, you seem to think we have an odd interest in rock pushing. <laughs> Just don't get it. I've been to movies. This is not a very good movie. I believe that you have an interest in catching liars. <laughs> like my neighbor Gary. Uh, uh, it sounds like more like extortion. Um, uh, is that really the plan here, sir? Listen here, Mr. Government Man. <laughs> when I get my... We prefer G-Man. Listen here, G-Man. <laughs> After I have my million dollars, 700,000 after taxes. <laughs> I'm willing to slide you a cool 30%. <laughs> and is that a finder's fee or is that a bribe? I don't know what either of those words mean. <laughs> uh, sorry, Mr. G Man, we just have a few more videos today. Uh, this one's of like a cat or something. Uh, this one is, I think, just an episode of Barney from the 90s. <laughs> and this one's for me. <laughs> now these look like high quality videos. You're gonna pay him for that, but not me? Barney! <laughs> Barney! Excuse me, I, I'm gonna have to call my wife. Please, talk to your wife. It's ringing. So, is it, is it working? Karen, I have bad news. What? Barney is the way to go. Who the fuck? I, I don't understand. I That's what my really... second graders say, and they're little shits! <laughs> Karen, I'm coming to your second grade class tomorrow. It looks like I have a lot to learn. I'll make space for you. Hi, Karen. Love you. Love you. You can have a seat right here, miss. Um, we're all ready for you. So I hear that you want a, a, big, a big makeover, that you're going on a trip, huh? Huh? Uh, as a consequence 
consequence, we were never allowed to have pets as a kid. No dogs, no cats, and in fact, my parents uh, schooled us in looking down on people who would keep animals. It was kind of like, oh, we feel so sad for them, that they're so needy as people that they need the love and affection of a vastly inferior creature. <laughs> I heard that like repeatedly on car rides with Linda Ronstadt blaring. <laughs> Seeing my dad driving back to Ohio, hear it singing, I am woman, hear me roar. <laughs> Just like, do you guys know Linda Ronson? Helen Reddy. Helen Reddy. Oh, even Reddy. better. Helen Reddy, yeah. And the Kingston Trio was big in my, in my family. So, no pets. Um, my, I was a, kind of a bit of a, uh, uh, a jerk as a kid in pushing my parents for things. My brother and sister were a little bit more pliant. I was kind of the one who was always like, really, are you sure about that? So I pushed my parents to get us a pet, and my mom finally got me hermit crabs. These were uh, acceptable pets because there's no allergies to hermit crabs. Uh, my grandfather, who is, uh, was very handy, built me an incredible cage for these. He got pieces of wood, made a base, this beautiful wire on the sides, and there were things in there for the crabs to live and crawl and be at home. And it was just such a, as I look back, it really was an amazing part of my childhood, these crabs. And I had them for, <laughs> I had them for, uh, I had them for a while. <laughs> I said to my mom, I said, um, the crabs are outside. Could you please bring them in from the porch? Uh, at night, they like to be outside, get some fresh air, my crabs did. And uh, I go to bed, I come down the next morning, I'm in my footy pajamas, and I've got my, come down, and I see my mother standing in the kitchen, and she's got a frying pan, and my crabs are on the frying pan. And she's working them like Grand Atchets works an omelet. And I stood there, mouth agape. I, I just, the worst thing in the world, the person I love the most, cooking, the thing that I loved the best at the time. My mom left them outside overnight, and the crabs froze. And she was trying to kind of reanimate them. <laughs> You think you have your life together, and then next thing you know, you're making a hermit crab terranium for your nephew. <laughs> you go to engineering school for several years, get a degree, get a job at Northrop Grumman, get fired out of nowhere, and you're making a terranium for hermit crabs for your nephew. <laughs> I've got all this wood in the back. That's what I'm going to spend the rest of the day doing. You think what you've got is going to be exciting. I'm going to build hermit crabs like you've never seen. Okay, clearly you misunderstood the tone of my voice. I'm not happy about it. <laughs> I enjoy my job before this. This is, uh, uh, this is demoting me. I'm going to find a creative outlet. And I'm happy for you. <laughs> the death of these crabs almost certainly the best thing that's ever happened to me. Great! <laughs> this is the worst thing to happen to me. It's like yin and yang. It <laughs> is. Right? And I'm on the shitty side. <laughs> You are so smiley! You're building a terrarium out of wood? It's really a bold vision. So that's why they gave you my job. You're an innovator. What can I say? It's the future. Wood, the future. Yeah, retro, right? Everything needs to be retro these days. Vintage. Vintage. Throwback Thursday. Artisanal. Artis that's not really the same. It is. Okay. It absolutely is, right? What is an artisanal cheese? 
Oh my! I keep on really? seeing that word and I don't know what it means. Well, you, you take ordinary cheese and you sort of smushed it in the ground and you authenticized it. <laughs> what? Yeah, 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 right? You don't want pristine, perfect cheese from the store. Anyone could do that. So you but something that looks like it's been in the rough and tumble of life, sort of like me, okay. that is what people want now. So you hey, could be... uncles? Yeah. Uncle Jim specifically. Since all my hermit crabs are dead now, I don't want a hermit crab to read you anymore. I now want a box for my two gerbils. I just got fired by my nephew. Uh, Mr. Ackett, I think that I have the artisanal cheese ready for you. I threw it on the ground multiple times. I stomped on it with my boot. I squished it with my boot heel even. Uh, and I made sure to walk around in various types of environments in the boots before I took these steps, sir. I believe that the cheese is now ready, sir. We'll stomp on it some more. This is Alinea. <laughs> Sometimes look down on people. 
I feel superior to them. You? <laughs> Being wishful thinking, you might win the lottery one day, sir. <laughs> I, 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 just give me a Hail Mary, let me get out of here. A Hail what? Hail Mary! <laughs> Hail Mary full of grace. No? Aw, oh, man, I just say you need to go out there and be a man. <laughs> I don't know that I can do that. <laughs> Where you come from, son? West Virginia. Oh, that's the reason, hell no. So what exactly are the qualifications for becoming a father? You gotta have patience like a motherfucker in here. As you know, I am unlike my siblings. I don't simply take what's given to me. I would like to reopen negotiations on the subject of bedtime. Please turn your attention to my slide deck. <laughs> kids. They whip out PowerPoint presentations all the time whenever they get in arguments, and I think they're smarter than me. <laughs> it doesn't make me feel good, Bill. Well, Larry, don't, don't let a kid get to you, man. It's not just one kid, it's the other one, too. One of them does PowerPoints, the other one is goddamn Da Vinci. <laughs> what do you mean? They have secrets from the Vatican? <laughs> yes, I do. Should we tell someone about this? No, that's why they're secrets. <laughs> I don't know them. Hey, you have secrets, too, though, dude. I do have secrets, not any I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> I mean, our secrets. We watch videos all day of people doing secret stuff. And the government pays us to do it. <laughs> Does the government pay your kids directly? No. I put ma I put food in their mouths. Exactly. I'm the breadwinner. And you can take it out. And I can take it out. Doesn't matter how many PowerPoint presentations <laughs> they put on in a single day. Not a single bit. Who needs a degree from Not Dartmouth? Me. Not me. To get this job. Not, Not me. To get <laughs> so how was camping? It's all right. My son beat me up though. <laughs> That's crazy because mine. Relationship with my kids is more heady, and yours seems to be more physical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he beat me up a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Were you arguing over food or something, or is this just a spontaneous yeah. thing that just kind of happens? I wanted to eat. So did Mark. And there wasn't enough food to go around? Well, there was enough. There was enough. <laughs> and the fists just were swinging. Fists. Two fists. fists. Rocks. Rocks. Words. Words. <laughs> hey, you know what they say? Sticks and stones may break your bones. They do really badly. <laughs> Words. Words will never hurt you. Don't you forget that next time your kid beats you up. Thanks for having me. Hey, I'm a light. Professor Todd Henderson. Uh, we need one more suggestion. Heartless. No, 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 no. Maybe something you find <laughs> scary. Oh, we got the perfect suggestion. The answer is Hillary Clinton. This is being recorded just so we can keep that. I've waited for this moment for about 12 years. Since 
uh, herself is likely to accede to the presidency. Uh, I am reluctant to say anything that could be used against me in a court of law. <laughs> you know, I am generally against uh, liars and uh, manipulators and uh, people who are power hungry and. Uh, and coercion, I'm against coercion. Uh, these things are all things that I'm afraid of. Uh, I, I don't like being coerced. Um, but I've been married to a woman who's been coercing me for 20 years. <laughs> so I guess I could come around to being coerced by a female president too. I remember when I was, uh, when I was, uh, when I was applying for college, uh, my dad said to me that um, uh, he didn't want to pay for me to go to one of these fancy schmancy Ivy League schools. Uh, you could get a perfectly good education at Penn State and you could go for free. Why would you pay hard-earned money to go to a fancy school? So uh, I had to pay my own way, uh, which is not so hard for a guy with uh, uh, embroidered pants. But, uh, <laughs> so I, I, I got a scholarship from the Army to go to, uh, to, go to college. And uh, I went for my, and I was a real male chauvinist pig, I will say, when I was a kid. Uh, you know, I, Can we put that in, exactly? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like, like the cracks. Maybe the uh, timing's a little bit wrong. But anyway, that's how it um, So I was uh, brought before a panel of uh, army brass as the last stage of this exam, and there were two women there. Uh, and uh, the, one, uh, the woman colonel said to me, Soldier? Could you take orders from a woman? And uh, I responded, uh, I've been taking orders from a woman my whole life, Colonel. Um, and so I think I could take orders from, from Hillary, too. Uh, but I will say that the only thing that, fear, that I'm scared of more than Hillary Clinton uh, is uh, needles. <laughs> Oh my god. Jogging. Um, 
Anyways, um, this is probably as good as time as any, but uh, I cheated on you today. <laughs> I'm sorry. The craziest thing happened. I was in there. I walk in. My secretary. She took her pants off. <laughs> Josette! <laughs> what? <laughs> what was I supposed to stuff. One of them is garter belts. <laughs> yes, sir, and I have to say, I think in the spring line, they are doing very well. I agree. So I'm going to say ixnay on the sexual assault prevention aid, but only when it comes to taking pants off, because you gotta, you got to market. you got to market our product, which is luxury garter belts. <laughs> <laughs> Are you recommending that we segregate our marketing department into those who market our garter belt products and those who do not, and only conduct the sexual assault prevention training on the non-garter belt marketing employees? I am saying we keep the sexual assault prevention training workshop exactly the same as it was before, except when it comes to taking pants off, just let that slide. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, for sure, for sure. I myself am very uncomfortable around people without pants. <laughs> but I got mouths to feed back home, you understand? The Henderson family, we didn't inherit the Versace fortune. <laughs> we just run it. <laughs> I gotta run it good. I, I, I certainly understand that, sir, and I, I don't want to undercut that. My, my boys play hockey. You understand how expensive a sport hockey is? You know how much those pads cost? You know how much those ER bills cost. What? 
You play hockey? <laughs> Where do you think I get these bruises all the I thought you were in a fight club or something. <laughs> That, that explains a lot. I was worried about you. I was about to ask, but then, you know, first rule. <laughs> no, they're not. One is organized and not underground. The other one's on ice. How often? Stick, not a stick, sometimes a stick. Sometimes. Sometimes. How often do you play? When do you get into that? Twi twi twice a week. Twice a week. Twice a week. I try to swim myself. Right. I'm a swimmer. You're not very fast, but it's consistency. I'm an endurance guy. I'm not Michael Phelps. I don't know any long distance swimmers. <laughs> By boss, you mean the American people. <laughs> and by plan, you mean take the presidency. <laughs> it worked brilliantly. <laughs> Bill, have a seat. <laughs> or have a look. The Oval Office is a beautiful, beautiful erectage. Look at that woman in her stupid large hat. That <laughs> hat is too stupidly large for you, woman. Okay, I'll just. I love you, honey. <laughs> Why are you keeping up the pretense, Bill? <laughs> I made sure there were no cameras. Well, I've done things in here that can report on the past, so I'm being careful. Sorry. I know. I got the sexual misconduct brief. <laughs> so much for coming. Uh, the Revival has shows uh, Thursday nights, Friday nights, Saturday nights. Um, you can take uh, classes here. Uh, your kids can take classes here. Uh, I'm a big believer in improv. Um, uh, I think it's a really good activity for people, communities, lawyers, everyone, indeed. Uh, did you have a good time tonight? Awesome. Thank awesome. you. Thank you. Four weeks from tonight, uh, that will be part of Law School Reunion Weekend. That will be the last law show of the year, and we're going to go out into the rest of the university. So thank you very much.